Hi, this is Jim Langley. When we're learning about building bicycle wheels, we run into all kinds of special spoken lacing terms. It all gets confusing fast, so I thought I'd explain some of it here. Let's start with two terms, names really, that we call spokes when they're in wheels. The names come from the spokes orientation in the wheel. The terms are used the same for front and rear wheels. The first two terms or names are interchangeable and used for the spokes that are angled rearward as they leave the hub. Or you could say they are trailing the hub. So they're called trailing spokes. They're also called pulling spokes, which refers to how pedaling the bike causes the spokes to pull on the rim. The other spokes, the ones angled forward in the hub, are called interchangeably leading or pushing spokes. This makes sense because they're leading the way. But spokes flex and can't actually push on the rim, so don't take the name pushing spokes literally. Now let's look at a spoke and its key parts, since you'll run into these terms too. The most common type of spokes found in wheels is the J-bend spoke shown here. The spoke elbow is also called the spoke bend. It's the part of the spoke that fits into the hub hole. The spoke head is the round oversized bottom of the spoke. It keeps the spoke from pulling through the hub holes and optimizes the spoke seat in the hub. The spoke head is usually stamped with the brand's mark. You must look close and even then it can be hard to read. With most J-Bend spoke lacing patterns, the spokes alternate in the hub, head up, head down. Wheel builders also say head out, head in. Here is an asymmetrically laced wheel, which is also called identical lacing. If the spinning wheel makes it hard to see the detail and which spoke is which and how they're oriented, simply pause the video and then you can see exactly how the wheel is laced. Here is a symmetrically laced wheel, which is also called mirror image lacing. Hey, if you enjoyed this video about basic wheel terms, I think you'll enjoy reading about bicycle wheels in the book, The Bicycle Wheel by Yopes Brandt. This book was written in the 80s, and Yopes was an automobile and a bicycle engineer, and he writes very nicely, it's easy to understand, and he covers everything from wheel components to wheel design to torsional loads on wheels, and you can learn a lot reading this book, and it's very enjoyable, and especially if you're interested in building wheels, learning more about wheels, understanding why you build wheels the way we do. The other reason I mentioned Yope's book is because you might be wondering how I lace wheels, my preferred lacing method for bicycle wheels. I use his technique for building wheels that do not have disc brakes on them. Um, before we had disc brakes on an awful lot of bicycles, most wheels use rim brakes and Yopst, this book was written around 1982, Yopst had a recommended lacing pattern for rim brake bicycles and the, his recommendation was that the pulling spokes were both, both pulling spokes on the right side and the left side were heads out spokes. That puts the spokes on the inside of the flanges, which reduces the tendency of the spokes to move towards the right, which can cause them to brush the rear derailleur when you shift it into the largest cog on the rear wheel. Um, I'll show you this, bring the camera and show you what it looks like, but it's a symmetrical lacing pattern or mirror image pattern with all the pulling spokes on the inside. And I use this on rear wheels and front wheels when I'm building wheels that don't use disc brakes. Now for wheels with disc brakes, it's a little trickier to explain 
So I created a whole video about it, a separate video which I'll link to below. But for disc brake wheels, I use Shimano's recommended disc brake spoking pattern. Uh, when, Shim when you buy Shimano hubs, sometimes in the box there's a little piece of paper that tells you how they recommend you build the wheels. And this lacing is how most pro wheel builders I know build disc brake wheels today. So that's in a separate video, and I'll share a link to that below. It's not a very long video, and it'll make it, you can understand it pretty, pretty readily doing it. So that brings this video to a close, and uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please keep the comments and questions coming. I learn things, and I enjoy answering and helping you build wheels. And um, I'll see you in the next video.